I think most people understand that life insurance has a death benefit that's payable at your death, but are there living benefits? Are there reasons that you may want life insurance for yourself? It's coming up next. Hey, this is Mel Stubbs. I'm a financial planner at Christie Capital Management, and we're trying to bring good content to you and help you with your retirement planning. We love helping people find peace in their financial life. Today we're talking about, are there reasons that you may want to have life insurance besides just the death benefit? Can you use life insurance while you're living? Well, the short answer to the question is yes, you can use it while you're living. Typically there are two different kinds of life insurance. There's term life insurance, uh, which is usually where you pay a premium for a certain term, a certain amount of time. And then that death benefit also lasts just for that certain amount of time. At the end of the term, the premium stops and the death benefit stops. Common examples of this are like a 15 year term or a 20 year term. Now there's another kind of life insurance that lasts forever. Back in the old days, it was called whole life insurance. Nowadays, it's called indexed universal life insurance. We use the example of an old console TV. My kids don't even understand how big these TVs used to be. And since then, they've come out with flat screen TVs. They kind of do the same thing, but the flat screens are much better. Well, the same thing happened in life insurance over the last 20 years. They've come out with life insurance that can last forever, just like whole life insurance. So no matter when you die, the death benefit's payable, but it has a lot more features. Some of those features are called living benefits. There are features that you can use while living. Now, the first benefit is called a terminal illness rider. If you're terminally ill and you get a doctor to fill out a form saying so, you can access a large portion of your death benefit even while living. Now there are several reasons why someone may want to do this. Maybe there are some bucket list items of family travel or something like that that you need this money to be able to afford. That's the terminal illness rider. Next, let's talk about a critical illness rider. Let's say you've had a stroke or a heart attack or some critical illness as defined in the policy. The life insurance company will advance you a certain portion of the death benefit immediately. Now I had a friend of mine who had two of these types of policies with this rider on it. Now he's self-employed and he had a stroke. He was in the hospital for several weeks and did not get back to work for a while. His income completely stopped because he had stopped working. In his case, the life insurance company advanced him $20,000 of cash within a week. Now how this rider works is they subtracted $50,000 from the death benefit to advance him 20,000 in cash. Now on the surface, that sounds like a terrible deal. And why would anybody want to do that? Well, his income had completely stopped and he was in need of money. He had a $500,000 death benefit, so lowering it by $50,000 was not a huge deal for him. The benefit came in that he needed the $20,000 in cash. He actually had two separate policies, so he was able to file two claims and got $20,000 deposited into his account twice. This was a huge benefit in his life. Now, this is an optional rider, so you don't have to do it if you don't want to do it. If this happens to you and you have this rider, you figure out if this is helpful or not. It really fixed a need in his life. Hey, if you're receiving value from this video, please consider subscribing. Please share this video with a friend who you think would benefit. We'd appreciate you doing that. The third thing is called a chronic illness rider. Now this is also known as long-term care provisions. If you can meet two of the six daily functions, and here's a list of them right here, then you qualify for this benefit. You have to get a doctor to fill out some paperwork proving that you qualify, and then the insurance company will start advancing you the death benefit so that you can start paying for long-term care expenses. Now, I don't want to get overly into the details here for this video, but I do want to talk about some of the highlights. With this life insurance, they advance money at the beginning, and you have that money for the entire year to spend as you want. At the end of the year, if you still qualify, then they will advance you another year's worth of money up front so that you can pay for things as you need it. This is called indemnity. This is a better way of doing it rather than reimbursement. Now this is a big difference compared to long-term care policies where you have to front the money and then turn in a bunch of receipts. And then at the end, you know, if you've done everything right, you'll be reimbursed. Another great thing about this is that this benefit is included in the life insurance. So all the years that you're paying for the life insurance and you're not using this benefit, technically you're not paying for this benefit. Now, when you do want to elect to take some of the money early, there is a discount factor. So for instance, you may qualify for them to advance $50,000. 
the amount of money that you actually get is based on your age at the time that you make the claim. For instance, they may lower the death benefit by $50,000 and you receive $42,000. You can now spend this money however you want for long-term care needs or really for any needs at all. Now the reason that the $42,000 is less than the $50,000 is because you're taking the money early. There's a discount factor factored in based on your age because the insurance company is giving you money earlier than they had to. They're missing out on the earnings that they could have had on that money. I view this as you finally paying for this benefit. You've not been paying for the long-term care benefit this whole time. You've only been paying for the life insurance. And now that you're needing it, this is when in essence that they're charging you for it. The main problem I have with a standard long-term care policy is the fact that you can pay for it year after year and then die never having used it. Life insurance works the exact opposite. You're not paying for the long-term care year after year. You're only paying for it if you choose to go on claim and you get money early. If you have other money to pay for your long-term care needs, then you don't have to go on claim and the death benefit will remain intact for your beneficiaries. If you want to spend the life insurance money early instead of your other money, you just go on claim. Just know that they will subtract from the death benefit more than what you're actually getting. Now another great feature if you go on claim is that the payment generally stops. You no longer have to make your monthly premium during the year that you're on claim. Now each and every year you still have to prove that you still can't do two of the six daily functions. Depending on how much your death benefit is and how much you're taking out, that will determine how many years you can receive this benefit. I think this is an important update to how life insurance used to be. These features are vital with proper planning. One of the scenarios in your plan that can mess up your retirement is if you have a long-term care need and you haven't planned for it. Using life insurance appropriately can not only provide the death benefit to help in your planning, but can also cover some of the long-term care needs that you may have. Now make sure you check out our other video on the Secure Act 2.0 because the updates that the IRS has made to the handling of IRAs and how they get left to a beneficiary is actually making life insurance a more important planning piece. In the past, retirement accounts have been a great way to pass money to beneficiaries. The IRS has put out a recent opinion on how they will treat retirement accounts in the future and they've lost some of their benefits. IRAs are no longer allowed to be, you know, quote unquote, stretched. In the past, you could leave an IRA to your children or other non-spouse beneficiaries and they could stretch the money for 30 or 40 years, letting it take advantage of the tax benefits of the retirement account. The IRS says that you can no longer do that. And when you leave an IRA to a non-spouse beneficiary, they have to remove it from the account by the end of the 10th year after death, thereby losing the tax advantages of an IRA and a Roth IRA. That one change has now made life insurance a much more attractive option to leave money to your beneficiaries. The death benefit of life insurance is generally tax-free. If you leave your beneficiaries a large traditional IRA with the new IRS rules, they're going to be more heavily taxed than in the past. Why do I say more heavily taxed? Because you can no longer take out small distributions, they force you to take larger distributions by forcing you to fully get the money out of the IRA and the Roth IRA by the 10-year mark. Larger distributions will move you up the tax bracket and cause more taxes at potentially higher tax bracket rates. So to answer the question, can you use your life insurance death benefit while living? Absolutely you can. With the new IRS rules, it makes life insurance a more attractive way to leave money to your beneficiaries. As you're trying to get your planning for your retirement worked out, there are several scenarios that you need to plan for. The great thing about the new life insurance policies is that they can help protect the scenario of you dying early with the death benefit, and they can also help protect the scenario of you needing long-term care with the living benefit. If your plan does not have this included in it, or you'd like more information on this type of planning techniques, please reach out to Christy Capital Management. Go to christycapital.com, give us a call on the number on your screen. We make it a practice to make sure your plan has been thoroughly thought out and have solutions for the breadwinner dying early and have solutions for long-term care planning. Please reach out to us at christycapital.com and give us a call. My name is Mel Stubbs. Happy planning. We need to do the proper disclaimers. The purpose of this video is not to give specific tax advice or investment advice. We're going over general principles and ideas that can be used and if used correctly can save and avoid taxes. You're gonna wanna work with someone personally who knows your situation personally. So seek out advice from an independent financial advisor. This is for educational purposes only. I hope you enjoyed the video.